click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends i welcome you all to the subject electromagnetic field theory we are with chapter number 10 that is the uniform plane waves in the subject electromagnetic field theory we have two types of field that is electric field and magnetic field we have understood the basic behavior laws theorems associated with the electrostatics and the steady magnetic field right from the first chapter to chapter number 8 and there upon we have seen the time varying fields and the electromagnetic wave model so in this chapter the uniform plane waves we have the wave equations that describe the electromagnetic wave propagation further these wave equations we have derived from the maxwell sweat of equation which has given us the behavior of electric field intensity electric flux density magnetic field intensity and magnetic flux density vectors associated with these two fields so we had the wave equations for general conducting medium we found the solution and in terms of the parameters alpha beta gamma eta v and lambda we can describe the wave propagation or the attenuation or the phase shift for the velocity of propagation or the complete propagation or the intrinsic impedance and the wavelength of the wave so upon these concepts the power that was addressed with the pointing theorem what is the power flow when the electromagnetic wave propagates into the general conducting medium or let us say the perfect dielectric medium or whatever else so based on to the pointing theorems and the wave power in the previous video we have solved one problem let us take one more problem so here we have the problem statement problem statement is given for a lossless unbound medium epsilon equal to epsilon 0 into 9 and mu r is equal to 1 with a plane wave traveling in capital x direction calculate we have three parts part a part b and part c so for part a we have to calculate the phase velocity of the wave for part b amplitude and direction of magnetic field intensity is to be determined if E bar has only y component with the amplitude of 10 volts per meter, and in the part C, the time average power per unit area in the wave. So this is the very simple problem statement. The pointing theorem to read this problem statement will be applicable for the wave power at part C. So now the phase velocity to be determined for the electromagnetic wave. We have the expressions for. the velocity of propagation so being the phase velocity we shall designate the symbol v sub p to have phase velocity further we require amplitude and direction so if we combine amplitude and direction of any quantity so it means itself is the vector quantity hence it is of magnetic field intensity so we require h bar in general magnitude as well as its direction so the given data is e bar e bar represents electric field intensity so its amplitude along the y axis is given 10 volts per meter so electric field intensity is given magnetic field intensity is to be determined so as it is in volts per meter it should be into the amperes per meter and in the part c the time average power per unit area that means the power density we have to determine in the previous problem also we have used the formula to determine the time average power density so how it shall be applicable to the given conditions let us see and calculate these values the given data are provided epsilon denotes the permittivity of the medium so here it is 9 times the permittivity of the free space epsilon 0 we know that it is 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 hertz per meter and mu r equal to 1 it means the medium is non magnetic we can directly put mu equal to mu 0 it holds the value 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 that is henry per meter the direction of wave that is a plane wave traveling into the x direction usually we choose the direction of propagation to be the z direction but in this problem statement the direction of propagation is mentioned to be x equal to uh, x direction 
that is why the E and H components will be lying into x equal to 0 plane perpendicular to this particular direction or simply we can say yz plane. For part B, it is also mentioned that electric field intensity has y component. Hence, obviously, for H, we have to select the z component. The medium is lossless. Hence, we begin to solve this particular problem with part A. So, very first of all, I mentioned the medium to be lossless. Therefore, sigma is equal to 0. The conductivity is equal to 0. Epsilon is equal to 9 times epsilon 0. Mu equal to mu 0. Now, the phase velocity for the lossless medium is actually 1 upon under root mu into epsilon. For free space, if you substitute 1 upon mu 0 into epsilon 0, being 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 into 1 by 36 pi into 10 to the power minus 9, any value for epsilon 0 can be substituted. So it gives us 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. That is the velocity of light wave we generally denote by V also. So here as we have the permeability information, the permittivity information for the given medium. So here we get the form of Vp in terms of 1 upon under root here it will be mu equal to mu 0 and epsilon will be equal to 9 times epsilon 0. Therefore, we shall write 1 upon under root 9 into it is 1 upon under root mu 0 into epsilon 0 which value is known to us. Hence, to the next step to obtain the Vp, we make 1 upon under root 9 in the multiplication with 3 into 10 raised to the power 8 meter per second. So, this simple calculation gives us the value under root 9 means it is 3, 3, 3 shall be getting cancelled. So, 1 into 10 raised to the power 8 meters per second or you can make it will be 10 to the power 2 into 10 to the power 6 hence 100 that is mega or in terms of mega means 10 to the power 6 meters per second so vp vp is given in these two forms so this is the required answer for part a into the problem statement so part a of this problem statement we are now covered with phase velocity that we have obtained Vp. So Vp holds this value 1 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Now we have to concentrate our attention on to the part B. We require amplitude and direction of magnetic field intensity. It means H bar is equal to what is the question. Previously Vp is equal to what was the question. So to determine H bar given is E bar magnitude and in Y component. Hence for part B, we have magnitude of E bar is equal to 10 volts per meter and that 2 into the Y component. Now as we know the two parameters that is we require the magnitude of H bar as well as with its direction also. So they are related by a certain relation in terms of intrinsic impedance. So, intrinsic impedance is nothing but the ratio of E to H. E to H is nothing but intrinsic impedance. For the general conducting medium, intrinsic impedance can be determined by knowing the values of epsilon, mu and the angular frequency and so on we can say. We require for the lossless medium only the mu and epsilon. Therefore, the intrinsic impedance eta we shall write it is under root mu upon epsilon therefore in place of mu we substitute mu 0 in place of epsilon it is given as epsilon 0 into 9 therefore we get it to the form 1 upon under root 9 and under root mu 0 into epsilon or divided by epsilon 0 is nothing but 120 pi or if you can approximate it to 377 so, if you get it like that, we obtain the value 125.6666. So, as this is intrinsic impedance, I must put the unit into the ohms. So, for determination of magnetic field intensity, 
first of all we have determined the intrinsic impedance so now knowing the intrinsic impedance we can make the formula that is the magnitude of h bar so that shall be given by that is magnitude of electric field intensity divided by eta therefore magnitude of eta uh, e bar is with us eta we have simply calculated just now so substituting this value the next step shall become simply i write h h is equal to 10 upon it is 125.6666 therefore h gives us the value 0 0.079 57 so h is the magnetic field intensity we measure it in terms of ampere per meter now this is the simply magnitude i just now outlined the magnitude direction is left because as per the problem statement we require amplitude and direction both so amplitude we have calculated with this much value we want the direction also so for determination of direction we take the help of cross product so that cross product is that is the direction of magnetic field intensity is obtained by taking the cross product in which the direction the wave is flowing uh, the wave power is flowing into the direction of electric field intensity vector as we see the model if these are the three axes this is supposed to be the y axis this is supposed to be the x axis and this is supposed to be the z axis so along uh, sorry here the wave propagation is mentioned to be in the x direction so i shall be mentioning it x here y component is reserved for electric field intensity and this should be the z component here okay so the wave shall be directed into this particular direction electric field co uh, component is directed along this component hence the third one which is actually perpendicular to both these directions or the plane in which these two directions are lying so shall be obtained by taking the cross product only hence we substitute the directions that is a h cap will be equal to a w cap we mentioned a x cap x being direction of propagation cross product with the direction of electric field intensity vector orientation is a y cap so this results into a z cap that we had guessed from this particular diagram also hence we have the magnitude as well as the direction magnitude we have outlined earlier the direction I outlined right now. Now we are finished with part B of this problem statement also. Now we shall attention, we shall pay attention to the part C that is the last part. So for part C we require time average power per unit area that means the power density of the wave. So for determination of power density here we use the simple formula P sub x A V is equal to E square divided by twice eta or we can mention in terms of magnetic field intensity vector also as it is the answer for part B. But let us get the simple form. So E is 10 volts per meter. So the amplitude that we substitute here. So the numerator will be 10 square divided by 2 into intrinsic impedance that we have obtained by taking 120 pi or 377 divided by 3. So this gives us the value that is power density, average power density is 0.3978. So being this the power density it should be measured into watts per meter square. This power density is with respect to the surface area here. So this completes us part number C. So I hope you have understood if we are given the medium, the material uh, parameters that is permittivity and permeability along with the direction of propagation, we are able to calculate the phase velocity. If E bar is given to us, we have determined the H bar that is knowing the electric component the magnetic component or the reversal can be done if you obtain 
the intrinsic impedance of the medium. So intrinsic impedance is very much significant in this case and the time average power per unit area. So in the next video we are going to take the last problem based on to the pointing theorem and wave power. So for getting such more information and practicing the problems for the subject electromagnetic field theory you can subscribe to ek channel thank you